Hi, everyone. Welcome to medical school and to the Sacramento region. My name is Eileen Wetzel. I'm the executive director of the Sierra Sacramento Valley Medical Society, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to your free membership in SSVMS, the California Medical Association, and the American Medical Association. The Medical Society is very grateful to the leadership of California North State University College of Medicine for their generous support of your membership in organized medicine for all four years of your training. Let's get started. What is the Medical Society? SSVMS is one of the oldest and largest medical societies in the United States. We have been in continuous operation for 153 years and proudly represent over 6,000 physicians and medical students in the Sacramento region. Our mission is to bring together physicians from all modes of practice to promote access to quality medical care, to protect the public health, and to enhance the physical and mental well being of our entire community. Some examples of how we do that are protecting the public health. SSVMS and CMA tirelessly advocate for the protection of the public health at the local and the state levels. I'd like to share with you a few examples of our advocacy. We've taken on big tobacco. In 2016, we success successfully sponsored a ballot initiative that increased the tax on all tobacco products. This initiative generates over $1.2 billion in funding every year to, to support smoking cessation programs and to increase funding for Medi-Cal, California's Medicaid program for low-income residents. Significantly, the Tobacco Tax Initiative has also allowed us to provide over $25 million a year in medical student loan forgiveness for physicians that commit to providing care to low-income Californians. SSVMS and CMA also took the lead on passing legislation sponsored by Senator and Dr. Richard Pan to ensure that children are fully immunized against preventable diseases such as pertussis. Here in the Sacramento region, SSVMS is addressing the opioid crisis that many communities are experiencing, including our own, through our RX Safe Physicians program. Through that program, we promote safe prescribing guidelines and access to naloxone, patient education on op opioids, and on alternative pain treatment options, in addition to resources for addiction treatment. We care about the public health and protecting our healthcare workers. That is why SSVMS raised enough money, sourced, manufactured, and donated over 30,000 face shields and masks to physicians and medical students on the front line of fighting COVID. We are tireless advocates for the medically indigent and the uninsured members of our community. Through the Medical Society Spirit Program, our local physicians and health systems have donated over $11 million in care to those that need it most. Legislative advocacy is something that we are very involved in here at SSVMS and at CMA. As a medical student member of SSVMS and CMA, you will have the opportunity to meet with elected officials, such as our very own Dr. Richard Pan, who is a state senator, and Dr. Ami Berra, who, who serves, serves in the US Congress. We invite you to join myself and other leaders of SSVMS as we meet with these lawmakers and advocate for issues that are important to physicians and to the patients that you treat. We ask that you get involved and how you get involved in organized medicine is entirely up to you and it depends on what you are personally interested in. You may want to attend CMA Legislative Leadership Day or participate on an SSVMS committee or, can, or, or council. Perhaps you're interested in working with SSVMS staff on healthcare policy development, white papers, or even research projects. You may want to consider a role in your medical student chapter, a leadership role, or to attend the CMA or AMA House of Delegates. Ask yourself, what are you passionate about? And then reach out to your medical society to us and let us know how we can connect you. Finally, as you enter your medical career, we really hope that you take the time to take care of yourselves. SSVMS um, created a nationally recognized Joy of Medicine program, which focuses on the issues of medical student and physician burnout. We care deeply about you and have produced resources and services that will help you as you continue your journey. I invite you to visit joyofmedicine.org, our website. There is a dedicated medical student corner where you will find videos, 
a resource library, and be able to listen to podcasts that feature physicians from our local community as they talk about their journey to becoming a doctor, as well as how they are discovering the joy of practicing medicine. Again, it is my honor to welcome you to Organized Medicine. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Kim Lau, and everyone else will be introducing themselves as they start their own parts of this presentation. But um, we're here to tell you about Organized Medicine at CNU and also um, how we influence health policy through Organized Medicine. Um, the associations that we're especially going to be representing are the CMA, the AMA, and SSVMS. And these are all, as you can kind of tell, subsections um, of the American Medical Association by geography. So what is organized medicine? Well, at the very um, minimum of definition, organized medicine is um, physicians, providers, organizing politically to advocate for our patients. Um, and so I think I will hammer that home that it is very significant that um, when providers advocate, it is very patient oriented. Um, it is about these are the populations we see. These are the people we see in person. Um, since as providers, we are people who are on the ground interacting with, um, with people that policymakers don't actually see on a regular basis. So when we speak for people, we actually speak for people we know in person. And that means a lot in these conversations with legislators. Um, last year, or this year actually, uh, myself and several of our classmates had conversations with policymakers and we could say, I know someone for whom telemedicine made a tangible difference this year. And before telemedicine came, it was enacted in place, um, they couldn't see a doctor. And after telemedicine was now enabled through Medi-Cal, they've been able to see a, a primary care provider. And that was significant. Um, but on a basic level, SSVMS is our local branch. It's where we can see people in person. CMA is our state branch in which we try to do state level legislation. Um, and then AMA is our national level. Um, and we can be engaged in all three levels. Um, so the best way to influence um, policy is to write a resolution. Um, when you write a resolution, um, each of these different levels has um, staff who will actually see um, what your resolution does and see it through the state legislature in some way. And so here's an example of something that um, was actually authored by students. And I know it says um, in a medical student section, and you'll understand what that means if you um, go a little bit further through the CMA, but um, this was um, a resolution that actually passed. Um, and you'll hear about this resolution a lot because um, there's been some really significant effects, um, positive effects, I would think, um, in California because of it. So hello, my name is David Lindars. I'm uh, the vice president for the Organized Medicine Club. And uh, just to give you an idea of some of the things that we do, here is the Senate Health Committee hearing, um, SB 276, which was a hearing for a bill introduced in 2019 by Dr. Richard Pan, who is in the background of these pictures behind the podium. He is a pediatrician and a member of SSVMS, which is the local branch, and he was elected as a state senator. And um, this bill was enacted to prevent fake medical uh, exemptions and require kind of more oversight over the medical exemption process for vaccines. And how we kind of got into the picture was we wanted to support um, the bill and show that medical students are agreeing with this. Um, this bill's message. And so in the background, you can see some CNU students supporting the bill and helping it get passed. And so one of the other main events related to organized medicine is the CMA Legislative Advocacy Day. And this year it was held online, but oftentimes it's held at the Capitol involving uh, medical students from all over the California, um, from LA, from Central and Northern California. And they all come to the Capitol to speak with legislatures about how to impact health policy. And so this year, 
in particular, it involved having small groups of medical students from about two to five medical students um, speak with California politicians at both the local county and state levels to discuss medical issues that are currently affecting us and impacting public health. And so some of the topics that were discussed this time included like the Black Lives Matter movement, um, police brutality, racism, homelessness, um, specifically like the use of kinetic projectile bullets, tear gas during protests, the COVID-19 response, just, and as Kim said, telehealth, there's just so many different topics that we all got to feel like we're a part of making a change for. And this day is really special just because you do get to talk directly to politicians and representatives and impact public health and speak um, about what medical students can do to impact public policy. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Pisupati and I'm also a co-VP for the Organized Medicine um, organization. Um, and I'm gonna be talking to you a little bit more about how we got involved with um, the California Medical Association this past year. Um, CMA puts on a House of Delegates every year to kind of discuss the major resolutions and reports that impact um, our patients as well as our own practices. And this year it was held in um, Anaheim. And as you can see, all of the board members were able to attend. And the major issues have included healthcare costs containment, as well as the use of medical marijuana, um, addressing the homelessness crisis, the single payer system, um, opioid use, and other ones. And it's a really great um, event where you can connect with other individuals who are passionate about the similar things that you are and really discuss what's important to you and get to network with other physicians and residents and other medical students who are kind of interested in advocating for their patients as well. Um, the American Medical Association also puts on um, a medical student section event every year. I believe this was in Chicago. And as you can see in the picture, these are our current M3s who attended last year. Unfortunately, we were not able to have it this year um, due to COVID, but we are hoping to um, get back to it. And in this picture right here um, in the far right, you can see students voting on resolutions um, through either approving or denying it. And as a part of the American Medical Association, we are a part of region one, um, and we tend to vote for that particular region. And this kind of shows you um, how many of our students were able to attend and advocate on behalf of both patients and students alike. Okay, hi everyone, my name is Abba Sate. I'm an alternate representative for SSVMS. And like everyone before me mentioned, SSVMS is a local organization. It's a local medical society, and it represents over 6,000 physicians and medical students in the Sacramento area. Um, I had a really wonderful time working with SSVMS over the past year. I learned so much about what physicians can do when they're really passionate about making a change in the local community. I was especially inspired um, recently when I saw SSVMS working so hard to provide resources to our local physicians, community, and hospital systems in providing PPE and just all the necessary resources during this COVID time. I think SSVMS is really great uh, to learn more about what intersection of medicine, uh, leadership, and passion looks like. So SSVMS is also great because they have a magazine and students can submit articles, but they can also serve as editors. And here's a recent um, issue of SSVMS's magazine, and it was highlighting the Black Lives Movement. And then uh, two of our students, um, Vincent and Cindy, were able to submit articles that highlighted their experience through medical school. So it's a great way to get your voice heard, um, and physicians will read about it, and it's a really great way to be engaged in the society. So other organized medicine activities that we do as a club are that we have dinner with physicians and faculty. So as you go through your uh, medical school curriculum, you'll be introduced to different uh, professors. So Dr. Bokes is an example. She teaches anatomy and we were able to have dinner with her and learn more about her career, how she ended up on a certain path. And so it's a really great way to connect with faculty outside of just academia. Um, we also have opportunity to shadow physicians and 
gain research opportunities. So you will be able to uh, connect with different physicians in that way. We recently had an naloxone training workshop, which was really cool because students receive naloxone at the end and hopefully they're able to use it um, appropriately in the future. So then we also had resolution writing workshop that Kim talked about earlier on. And for me, resolution writing was really intimidating. So I didn't know much about it going into organized medicine, but the workshop was so great in that we broke it down. And I felt more confident leaving that workshop that I would be able to write a resolution that I really cared about. So these are some of the activities that we had. We also had uh, volunteering opportunities. So we were able to go out to SANE, which is a um, needle exchange program in Sacramento. And we were able to see um, what the program looks like, what the patient's coming in, um, what the exchange really entails. So that was a great way to get our feet wet in the community. Um, we also have political advocacy. So in the picture, you can see that some of our M3 students were able to go out to um, Sacramento.